Okay, I'm here to try and explain a little bit about a, um, a specific lesson that we have for the CT STEM group. And it has to do with a, a computer simulation, a set of computer experiments. Um, this is right up uh, the, with the thinking of computational thinking. Uh, in fact, a lot of people think of computational thinking as just computer-based exercises, tools, computer simulations, computer experiments, um, computer analysis. Well, all of those certainly belong within computational thinking, and there's obviously a lot more that we're learning about with this workshop. Uh, the simulations that are, are very popular in physics, if you're not familiar with them, are the FET, P-H-E-T, simulations. And if you do a Google search, uh, it'll, it'll take you right there. And we're going to be interested in the, the physics simulations. FET has been around for a number of years now, and these are nice because they, uh, there's all sorts of different types of simulations for different topics. Uh, they're all kind of designed for students and teachers alike to, to go into these things and play with them with slider bars and changing initial conditions and seeing uh, under ideal conditions, you know, under those theoretical conditions that we learn in textbooks, um, how the system should behave. So on the physics page, there, there's again all sorts of different types of of simulations that you can look at in, in different subfields of physics. Um, a number of, of their electricity and magnetism ones are quite good. Uh, if you do anything with electromagnetic conduction, I'll just throw it out there. <laughs> uh, the Faraday's Law and, and the Faraday's Electromagnetic Labs are quite good. Uh, but today, for the CT STEM, uh, one of the things that comes up within the context of next generation science standards, and it's been kind of a buzzword for the last few years in education, is inquiry-based labs. Um, letting students go and try different things and topics they don't really know, and they become the scientists, and, and they try to make the discovery before you talk about it in class. Um, that's really, in my mind, the, the biggest change that we have with next generation science standards is, is actually you know, cutting back on the amount of content a little bit, but at the same time looking at doing the process of science in, in much greater detail than uh, most teachers have done in the past. So I'm going to scroll down. Um, again, there's gravity in orbits, there's uh, things on microwaves, molecules, normal modes. And the inquiry that, that we can look at, um, that we found is, is pretty good, is this resonance lab. Uh, resonance is something that you know students may have heard the word. They might think in terms of, of music and flutes or blown into or across the top of a Coke bottle or something. Um, but chances are they don't really know much about it. And so this particular computer simulation, when you click on it, you'll, you'll get a screen that looks like this. Uh, you can actually download it to your, your hard drive. Um, you can embed it if you have a blog or something. Or you can just click on it a second time and, and play it. Um, it. Comes right up. There's really not much else to download or anything. And in this particular one, um, the types of experiments that students can do to try to figure out what the properties of resonance happen to be, uh, you can change the number of resonators on this little frequency driver. Uh, you can you can select masses. You can select the, the, the spring constants that they're attached to. Uh, you can put in a, a damping, which is effectively air friction. You can do this with or without gravity. Uh, you can you can set rulers to, to actually measure um, amplitudes. And then on the driver itself, as you can see, you can vary the frequency and you have control of the amplitude. And so really, this particular uh, exercise, this particular lab, um, as you'll see in, in the hard copies that you're receiving, um, and it's on the, the CT STEM wiki, it allows students to, to go into it and, and literally just start to play with it. And it, it really, you, you can get a lot of good discussions as far as like experimental design, um, how do you go about doing controlled experiments? You know, if, if you wanted to, you know, students when they're on their own, uh, they're, they're so used to getting procedures um, that they might start asking a bunch of questions as to just what do you want me to do with this. Um, so we can remind them what what controlled experiments refer to. You can have 
let's say if you want to find out the effect of frequency, you should probably keep everything else fixed that you have control over and just do some number of runs uh, varying the frequency. Some students, so if, if I turn the driver on, okay, in this particular case, it's just a single mass. Um, we're running this at, at one beat per second or one hertz. And uh, you can control the, the speed of the simulation if you wanted to, to get like uh, a slow motion type effect. Um, you can, you can again, it depends on, on what experiments the students want to do to try to figure out what factors affect and cause resonance to happen. Is, you know, is the motion of the spring, is that frequency of the spring in tune with the, the frequency of the driver? Or is it some multiple? Um, another thing that I know some students have done is, uh, if, if they're familiar with Screencast-O-Matic, that's the, the software I'm using to make this particular uh, kind of like how-to video. They might actually record their session on, on FET on their own computers, uh, make a screencast of it, and then they can go back and they can, they can look at different parts of the experiments as many times as they want. Um, they can do it frame by frame and so on. So uh, they, they really can take advantage of, of video techniques in addition to computer simulations to uh, really get into the details of, of what's going on here. Um, just kind of show it, it's kind of neat. Uh, you can add other springs on here and then each one of these we, we can select which which spring we want to play with. Let's say if I want to look at the second one we can change it to resonator 2 and I can give it maybe a heavier mass. A bigger spring constant, whatever the case might be. Uh, whoops, I just hit reset. Um, you don't want to do that. And so again, you know, it, it's just it's it's a really nice sort of um, experiment to do. Lots of different uh, ways you can vary things. Um, I'll, I'll let you play with it now at the workshop. Um, this will give you a chance to, to kind of see where you'd want to take this with your students and, and how what would work best for them in your particular classes. Um, I encourage you, if, if you, again, aren't familiar with FET, to look at the other options uh, in different subject areas. Um, lot, lots of good possibilities here. And, you know, uh, in some cases, there, there's experiments that students can do in systems that they can't do physically, uh, say orbits or different types of things with electric fields or electronic equipment that you might not have at your school. And it gives them a sense of still doing experiments, still having that mindset, uh, still in that inquiry-based mode in order to make discoveries of things on their own before you get to the textbook or before you talk about it in class. Uh, so I hope just this quick little demo um, is just meant as an introduction. It's now time for you to have a chance to play with it and, and really kind of fine-tune it into something that, that will be useful for you. Okay, thank you.